Hi, I'm Adam Natale, director of SVA Theater at the School of Visual Arts. If you've never heard of SVA, we're a preeminent art and design college in New York City. Check the description below for more info. Since 2014, SVA Theater has hosted After School Special, the college's annual alumni film and animation festival. The festival is normally a series of free screenings followed by Q and A's with alumni who are successfully working in the film industry. Even though we're unable to host in-person screenings this year, we're thrilled to be able to present interviews with over 25 alumni who've worked on a wide variety of feature films, television shows, documentaries, animated films, and more. Whether tonight's Q&A focuses on a particular series, film, or other work, we'll be sure to note it in the description below and we'll provide info on how to watch. All of our festival interviews will premiere here on YouTube during the week of September 21st. We're calling this our work from home edition of After School Special, and our guests are zooming in from all over the world, from Singapore and Germany to Canada and California. A full schedule of After School Special 2020 interviews can be found at svatheater.com, but all videos will remain on YouTube following their premieres. I hope you enjoy tonight's interview, and if you're interested in viewing past After School Special Q&As, you can visit the School of Visual Arts' YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in and fingers crossed, we hope to see you in person at an SVA theater event in the near future. I'd like to welcome Joel Sevilla, a 1999 graduate of SVA's BFA Computer Art Program. Joel is actually a returning after school special guest, having participated in year one of the festival when he joined us in 2014 for a screening of the original Avengers film. So we're thrilled to have him back. For the last 20 years, Joel has navigated a constantly shifting industry by embracing the diversity of his SVA education. Beginning his career as a freelance animator in New York, Joel kept busy with web design to help fund his much needed snowboarding jaunts. From there, he went to California, where I assume maybe the snowboarding uh, might be better in some regions, uh, <laughs> to create visual effects for dozens of feature films and commercials with Hydraulics, where he was a CG supervisor. He is now the owner of his own visual effects studio, Track VFX, which has offices in both Los Angeles and Vancouver. Besides the Avengers, he's worked on a long list of films and shows, including Looper, Jack Reacher, X-Men Days of Future Past, San Andreas and Stranger Things, which scored him an Emmy nomination. Most recently, he served as a visual effects supervisor on Greyhound, starring Tom Hanks, which premiered in July on Apple TV Plus, and which we'll be discussing tonight. So let's welcome Joel. Hey, how are you? All right, good, how are you? Thanks for having good. me. Good to see you again. Glad to have you back, returning from, from year one all the way back in, uh, yeah. in 2014. Um, a lot's changed since then. You got your own studio now, which is yeah. awesome to hear. Um, but I'd love to start by uh, by having you tell everyone a little bit about your experience while at SVA and how you decided to go into visual effects. Sure. Yeah, definitely. So um, my SVA career, uh, you know, from high school, I would, had always always been into drawing and painting and and um, any kind of art stuff. And so uh, I ended up having the opportunity to have a computer art class in my high school. So that kind of led me to look around when I was looking for schools, like who had the best computer lab at that point um, back in 95. So <laughs> um, there, weren't, there weren't a ton, but SEA definitely had the best. And so that was a lot of the reason that I chose SVA and being in New York as well is a huge thing for me. So um, yeah, so I started and I, I my major originally started as um, like advertising design kind of stuff. And I switched it as soon as I started doing more computer lab stuff at SVA. I fell in love with computer animation and um, yeah, it just went from there. and. I was really into uh, any kind of animation at that point. I had taken classes doing stop motion animation and um, I was a huge, uh, and still am a huge fan um, of, um, like there's a, an old 
stop motion animation called Vincent by Tim Burton. That um, was a huge kind of influence for me get, getting into getting into animation. And um, I think that kind of led me further down the animation rabbit hole and finding out um, the CG animation stuff that I could make and make it look like stop motion. And it just went from there. So um, I really focused on learning everything I could about computer animation. Um, and you know, you have to learn everything at that point. It was like I was learning everything at the same time. I think my junior year was when um, Maya first came out. We had uh, a, an instructor who was a beta tester for Maya at SVA. So we had like, we were like right on the edge of that when it's when it came out. So which was really cool. Um, so yeah, just going and learning as much as I could. And, you know, I was very involved in school out, uh, as well through the computer lab. I worked part time at the computer lab. Um, and then I was also an RA in the dorm when the George Washington was, was still a dorm. I'm not sure if it, it, it's it a doesn't... hotel now, a ah, very, very okay. nice hotel. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was an RA there. So like my, my, um, I really feel like I like got as much as I could out of my SVA experience. Um, you know, I was so determined to take everything I could and, and get everything out of it and come out of my senior year knowing that I was going to get a job immediately. Um, and at that point, uh, my senior year, I had already done some work. Um, I'd worked on a couple little projects here and there. There was a Red Man Method Man video called The Goodness that I worked on. <laughs> that year, which is really cool. And, um, and then I, I got an internship at this place called Mechanism Digital, um, which is still around to this day. Um, and I worked on uh, a couple different things there, but one of the first, that was actually my first movie credit. Um, I worked on a Spike Lee movie um, uh, starring Savian Glover. Um, and I did some animation uh, of this little guy in that movie. I assume, I assume that's Bamboozled? Bamboozled. That is Bamboozled. Yeah, yeah that was my right. first, my first right. movie credit. Yeah, so um, I was kind of like had a bit of a head start, I think, before I graduated. And that had everything to do with um, the contacts I'd made at school. Um, and for sure, uh, John McIntosh, who was the head of the department at that time um, was, I, I'm like, I feel like I, you know, we make jokes all the time, like I should pay him a percentage of every paycheck that I get. <laughs> um, and it's true, he was so instrumental um, in, in my career as a, as a CG artist. Uh, he helped so much, was so, um, you know, willing to do whatever he could for, for all the students but um you know he really he and i kind of like formed a really strong bond and um yeah it was amazing to have that support uh going through school and uh, it just led to so many more good things after that so um yeah my that was you know my experience at school is and uh, your thesis film, you know, won an award the year that you graduated. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So my thesis film, uh, it was called Eden, and I won a Dusty Award for it that year, the, the year that I graduated. Um, I, uh, a few years back, I was looking for a copy of the film, like trying to, I knew it was somewhere on uh, beta tape, because that's what we used back then. Um, I couldn't find it anywhere, but I ended up um, doing a very deep dive search on the internet uh, and ended up finding it. And I found this really low res version of it um, that I was able to see and like, oh yeah, wow, I did that. That was so long ago. <laughs> but, um, you know, that was really exciting. And I think, 
you know, being from start to finish working on that project and um, again, like being so focused on the animation of it, like look at it now and it's very obvious what I liked about CG at that point and what I didn't really care about. Mm -hmm. um, really didn't care for modeling and that sort of thing and it kind of shows, um, but I really did love the animation and I, I spent so much time like really nailing that as much as I could. So um, yeah, it was pretty cool to see that after I, I dug around for it. So you mentioned after graduation, you know, you, you pretty much went right to work in the industry. Uh, like you said, you know, you worked on Bamboozled, you worked on that video, you started as an animator. Can you sort of give us the overall arc of your career over the past 20 years since graduation? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, again, at the time I had uh, an instructor, his name was Jason Strugo, who was my um, thesis advisor and also a soft homage teacher at SVA at the time. And he had, he was working at Nickelodeon Digital um, and, and that year that I graduated. And um, so it was kind of, I, I believe it was maybe two weeks prior to me graduating. Um, he kind of pulled me aside and said, hey, you know, after seeing what you've been doing this whole time and um, you know, wanting to help, uh, there's some positions opening for animators at Nick Digital, would you be interested? And I was like, hell yeah, that's awesome. And uh, my, I had a couple of friends um, that worked, one worked there already that, who was also a graduate of S SVA, Josh Cordes. Um, so he, I knew he was there and then uh, one of my good friends and still very close friends, Jeremy Butler was graduated with me. So we all ended up working at Nick Digital um, after we graduated, which was awesome. So it was kind of like an extension of school, um, but right into the real world uh, and did a lot of cool stuff, worked on a bunch of commercials and music videos and that sort of thing. Um, and then after a few years in New York uh, at Nick, I was, I started freelancing and bouncing around different houses or Curious Pictures and RGA and um, PSYOP, a few different places in New York. And, uh, but I was still kind of drawn to doing some film stuff. So um, uh, again, Joshua Cordes, he was kind of the trailblazer. He had answered a, a random ad for animators that they were looking for animators at this place in, in Santa Monica, California. Um, so he left Nick, went there to work for like a, a month or two and then came back. And um, I remember he came back and was like, man, it's so awesome. Like being out there and the work is so great. So he left and, you know, um, him being one of my best friends, I kept in touch and he's like, you gotta come out here. And um, I ended up, you know, I think it was a year and a half later, uh, I ended up moving to LA, um, working at Hydraulics where Joshua worked. And, um, and then from there, it was just all the cool stuff that I figured I'd, I'd you know, I'd worked on some cool stuff at that point. Um, but it started being like TV shows. I remember uh, X-Files was like a, a, like a cool show at that point. And, I did a shot for X-Files and then I also um, had the opportunity to work on a Tool music video, which, uh, you know, in high school, I was like number one fan of Tool. Like I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't imagine, I was like, is this real? Am I like really doing this? I'm working on a music video for this band that I idolize. So that was amazing. Um, and there's more, I have more story about that later, but um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it was just like the projects kept getting bigger and cooler and, you know, the people I was working with were so talented and, um, you know, such a good environment to jump in and, and get that experience that early on. At that point, I was 25, 26, um, and, uh, you know, my career was, was going. 
Um, and I, I still love it. You know, like I started as an animator. I'm doing different things now. Um, but um, I still love doing animation. I still love the whole process, the visual effects, all of it. Um, it's still exciting to me. And, you know, it's, it's been a, a very fun, fun career. Uh, and, and that's great to hear. And, and what's interesting is, you know, we've interviewed quite a few visual effects artists for this year's after school special. Many of them work in invisible effects. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not on the big blockbuster films like you are, um, the Avengers, like I said, Looper, Stranger Things. Um, you know, I assume that at some point you, you do or have, you did or have done uh, invisible effects, but yeah. these big blockbuster films, I mean, are, are, is it just as exciting to work on them as it, as it seems it would be for a visual effects artist? It is, it really is. I mean, I think what's really cool is, I think um, when people ask me about work or what I do and um, kind of start explaining it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, so, you know, there's like the movie, you know, Avengers, have you seen it? And of course, like a lot of people have seen an Avengers movie. Um, so they kind of get it, you know what, they're, what I'm talking about. And for, to have them understand it in a way and possibly have seen work that I've done, people that I've never met before, and they're familiar with something that I did, whether they knew it at the time or not, they can go back and say like, oh yeah, I saw that. And wow, what part did you work on? And oh, that's so cool. And that, that feeling of like, even when I go now to go see a movie after it's done um, and sit and watch and, and understand like how long it took to do what we did because the stuff takes a long time so sure. we pass by on film in a couple of seconds something that we worked months and months on for but it's still very exciting and exhilarating to watch it and to to know that I was a part of it in some way and that it's it's on film like it's always going to be there and you know I can eventually show my kids like hey this is what dad worked on and, and that Kind of thing so that's really a, a huge part of it it's fun so besides that tool music video was there one piece you know that really stands out that you absolutely loved working on oh uh so i two, i think there's two big ones um and then there's the tool one but <laughs> um <laughs> um so when we worked on the first avengers movie um because at that point I was, you know, a huge fan of, of comic books and um, knew at that point, like Iron Man had come out. So there, there was like this momentum building for Marvel and, um, and knowing how cool Avengers was gonna be. So just being a part of that was super cool. The stuff that we did in it, I, um, you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the most fun animation that I've done, but I'd say probably one of the best experiences and um, definitely one of the most exciting um, just because of the scope of like at that point in my career, what that meant to work on that movie and how, how, how excited I was to work on it and how like, and then everything was very secretive. So it was kind of cool. Like, you know, I'm working on this th cool thing. I can't talk about it though. Um, so that was super cool. Um, I would say kind of hand in hand is Stranger Things. Um, when, uh, you know, at that time I was working at Hydraulics and I was a visual effects supervisor at that point. I had moved up from being an animator to CG supervisor to, to VFX supervisor. So um, when Netflix approached Hydraulics, and at that point I was very involved in that at the management level of like when projects started coming in, um, we did like kind of a dog and pony show of like, you know, this is what we can do. This is the stuff we've done. We did a tour of the studio with some people from Netflix. And um, the whole time I was like so jazzed about working on Stranger Things season two because I, just finished watching season one, loved it. And the, 
and the stuff that we were going to be doing in season two was like all the cool creature animation stuff that you know as an animator is like super soup that's like the highest pinnacle like cool creatures to animate so um i remember that day we we showed them around and i think it was like two days later we got the call that we got the job and um and it was a ton of work and it was grueling at, at points and um the team i was working with were just amazing like everybody at hydraulics was awesome um we really pulled together and made some really cool stuff and uh and the even the film makers were great the duffers were were super nice and and easy to work with the vision that they have for, for stuff is amazing um paul and christina graf who were the, like the netflix side the effects supervisor and producer um were challenging you know they 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 challenged all the vendors to to do their best work and um and it shows i think we did some really great stuff um the emmy nomination for that was just kind of like icing on the cake i mean I, at that point when i heard that we were nominated for it i kind of like didn't understand that it was a big deal i it was like oh wow okay that's cool and as i was you know like telling i remember telling my sister um not too long after i was like oh yeah so you know that show i was working on got nominated you know we actually i i got i'm all, i'm like my name is on the thing um and she was like really that's amazing and i was like yeah 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 it's pretty cool um and then like it started hitting me later how uh you know it, how much of an honor it was you know and um it's it, it's such a group effort i wish everybody could have been named on the on the nomination i um there's so many people involved and 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 it's such a big crew that deserves all the credit um but yeah it was it was great and um being in that same category you know we didn't win i mean uh you know there's this show called game of thrones that people like <laughs> um, <laughs> um which was amazing like i voted for game of thrones that, that you know i would <laughs> over anything else um but yeah just to be mentioned in that category with those guys and and to have worked on something that so many have people have seen it again it was like one of those things that you know people ask um you know, a few years ago, oh, what have you worked on recently? I was like, oh, there's this Netflix show called Stranger Things. I was like, oh my God, of course. Yeah. You know, like people are like, what do you mean? So um, that's fun. I think that's that's really exciting. So those are like one, you know, some of the highlights of, you know, the stuff that I've worked on so far, for sure. Well, we actually have a reel from Hydraulics uh, of Stra Stranger Things, so I'd like to uh, to throw that up right now yeah, and have yeah. you talk a little bit about um, you know the work that you did on the show. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, we did quite a lot of work and and on the show, um, and it ranged from doing these. What you're seeing here is the upside down kind of world effects and. Um, you know, it was really challenging. A lot of this stuff, I mean, this is, none of this is in camera. All of the, these vines and all that stuff, they did a little bit here and there in camera, but, um, you know, we did a lot of R&D and making sure things were looking great. And um, the directors and Paul, the VFX supervisor for Netflix was very particular about how all this stuff should, should look. And, you know, it was really collaborative. Like they were, they kind of let us run with a lot of the look of how this ended up. Um, so it was really cool. And then now this stuff is just super fun. I mean, who doesn't love a little creature, cute little guy to animate who's actually like a monster <laughs> eating people. Um, but that was fun stuff. I mean, it, it, and it looks cool, it's a cool concept. And, you know, doing creature animation like this is something that I've always loved to do. Um, I obviously didn't animate all of this stuff. I, I did some of the, some cherry picked things, but 
um, the team of animators that we had at Hydraulics was, were just amazing. So um, it was awesome to be like kind of heading up that department. Um, and uh, especially, like I said, coming from such an affinity for animation and creatures and stuff, like this is always cool stuff anytime you get to do aliens or that kind of thing. So um, yeah, it was a really fun project. And I would say um, some of the most challenging, like we had to figure out some stuff that like just we hadn't done up to that point. And especially with the shadow, that, that monster there, <laughs> um, just like this, there, as it was described at first, it was like, we want this creature. It's kind of like this big nightmarish spider looking thing that's made out of a tornado of, of ash. And we're like, okay, sounds easy, sure. So um, there's a lot of back and forth, but I think what we came up with worked really well. And so as a visual effects supervisor, you just mentioned that you did still work on some of it. Is that typical for a supervisor uh, to create as well? Uh, I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think it's really important uh, uh, as I went through my career, um, you know, going from an animator to start like animation supervisor and the CG supervisor and VFX supervisor. And now having my own company, um, you know, it, it was, I always liked to be involved on a granular way in, in some of the shots um, uh, and being able to, to animate stuff, especially. Um, so, and what's interesting about me in particular uh, is that usually a VFX supervisor um, would come from more of a 2D background, doing compositing and that sort of thing, where my background was more 3D. So, um, you know, it, it's interesting in that way. And uh, I still really like getting into it and like doing animation when I can. And if there's shots that come up that, you know, I have time for in between all the other stuff I have to do. Um, I'll, I'll be like, yeah, everybody can work on everything else. And I just want, I want that one. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, so I think, uh, you know, it's, it's not typical. I know it's just, a, it's a very intense job being a, a VFX supervisor. There's so many different things that you have to kind of account for. Um, and so many different people and, and departments and things. So it's a lot to manage, but, you know, I've been lucky to be able to set aside some time to, to actually dig in and do some animation. And so you were a supervisor on Greyhound, um, which as I mentioned, premiered in July on Apple TV Plus. Um, this is very different. It's not the monster movie, but it's still right. very visual effects heavy. It's, yeah. it's a World War II movie, um, ships in the ocean, and it's pretty much a ship battle for an hour and a half. Uh, yeah. there, there's yeah. not much else to it. Uh, it's it's still a, a fun movie and very interesting. It's you know about uh, something that happened specifically uh, during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. But talk talk to us a little bit about how you signed on to that project. Yeah. So we um, again, it was kind of a very similar thing. Uh, Playtone, who which is Tom Hanks's production company. Um, we had a relationship with somebody there and um, uh, we had a meeting with Aaron Schneider, who is the director of Greyhound. And uh, we talked about, you know, his vision for what this was going to be and um, his idea of how he was going to carry it out. And at that point, um, we knew there was gonna be a lot of previs. There were, we were gonna to have to figure out the, bat, the ship, where the ships were gonna be in the battle, um, the timing of things. And um, it, was, it was a huge kind of puzzle to put together. So um, along with like, I mean, doing water effects and all that stuff is just a whole other thing. So, but the previs in particular is what I, focused on for this for this film so we set up um 
a, like a mini studio at the production company. Had animators there, um, had camera trackers and just like a kind of like mini previs hit team that did, did everything that did all of the animation of the boats, the battles, and then we used a virtual studio, um, which I know is, is gaining quite a lot of press lately, um, doing virtual production. Uh, so we were able to bring the previews that we did from Maya um, into Unreal and um, use kind of a game engine to have the director be able to set up shots and, and use kind of real time and, and we had the the animation of the ship battle was kind of running and he would he was able to like be on the ship and pick a shot or we'd notice that a ship needed to be in a different place in order to for it to be featured in a shot that we wanted it to be so um, doing it that way was really kind of innovative at that time I mean this was a couple of years ago um, I know uh, it's kind of like just when virtual production had been like kind of taken off. So um, it was cool to be a part of it in that way and be on the cutting edge of, of that virtual kind of way of doing previs. And just for people who might not be visual effects savvy, previs is pre-visualization, you know, before all of the visual effects are actually plugged in. And Maya, which you mentioned earlier, is a type of software and then Unreal is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Epic Games created a platform, Epic Games being the company behind Fortnite, uh, created a, a platform that many people are using for many different things, uh, for, for you know, create, creative software. Um, so is that, it sounds like that must be gaining traction then using, using Unreal. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have a lot of friends that are doing virtual production on a lot of different things and, um, uh, it's so it's so nice to be able to see that stuff real time when they're filming it. So um, I know a lot of people have probably heard about Mandalorian and the way that was made, and there was a lot of virtual production. Um, and they the way that they did it was different than what we did, um, as for because they were using animation uh, not only for the previs they were doing they were using it as backdrop for what they were shooting um so that was really cool and and it's it's just getting more and more advanced uh all this stuff is helping kind of bring filmmaking to a place where you can you can get more real-time feedback as you're making a film you know it's so important i think for when you're shooting something that um that the actors kind of know what's going on. A lot of what I do, uh, what I've done on being a visual effects supervisor is I kind of, you know, if an actor is sitting on a green screen and they don't know what's going on in the background, um, it's hard for them to kind of sometimes imagine like what's happening. So, um, you know, I'll sit down with them and, and say like, okay, here's what's happening. Um, and I can actually show them what, is going to be in the background and, and where it will be and and then in some cases we're able to take that and put it on a screen that they can see like real-time composite of themselves in front of this thing and it really helps get the actors into the mindset of what's happening um, and it helps the the director and the dp kind of set up shots so um, it's such a good tool and i think it's just going to continue to get better and make filmmaking more accessible to everybody and quicker and and better overall. I mean, I think, you know, I don't want to poo-poo on too much stuff, but if you imagine um, a movie like uh, the, the Revenge of the Sith, right, that was mostly done on a green screen. And if you go back and watch that today, you kind of can see that that was mostly done on a green screen. And in some cases, they didn't really, um, you know, get the, the actors didn't kind of really feel what was going on, but um, nowadays it, it just, it's so seamless. And I think that has so much to do with there being more information to give the filmmakers as they're making the film. Um, 
which makes the visual effects better in the end. And so you just mentioned, you know, sometimes you're you're working with the actors. Is that happening more and more where you're actually going to set and are and are working on the shoots? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, as a visual effects supervisor, uh, more and more. I mean, it started, I think my first like official VFX job, I was uh, I worked on a commercial that we shot in Chicago and it was like dealing with um, a few um, actors, commercial actors, and then you know, and then all the way to, you know, I, I was the, I was the production side visual effects supervisor for Baywatch. So I'm like sitting down with Dwayne Johnson and kind of talking over like, Hey, this is what this boat's going to be on fire behind you. Like, this is what's happening. And he's like, cool, man. Cool. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah, it's, that's exciting. I mean, it's cool to be a part of it on that level and to be, um, you know, kind of in the room with these with these folks as they're making these movies. It's exciting. So back to Greyhound, you know, you said it, you know, this has been in process for several years, even though it just came out uh, a month or so ago. Um, you know, with respect to what we saw in the trailer, even though we don't have a real a specific visual effects, um, you said you did mostly previs, but there was other work as well. Do you recall any particular sequences that you worked on? I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of both yeah, boats no. bombing each other. But was there one sequence that you that you recall? Yeah, for sure. So there was the shot where um, uh, where you see the the torpedo kind of just skipping along the side of the boat um, of the ship. Um, that little sequence right there, where from I don't want to ruin the film for people, but um, a torpedo is launched at. Uh, the ship and there's the whole sequence of the torpedo barreling down at the ship. So we had to figure out um, the timing and, and there was a particular shot that um, when Tom Hanks is kind of walking on the bridge of the boat looking at the torpedo headed toward them and um, we shot that obviously. We were on a soundstage. We had this big kind of um, set piece of the bridge of the boat. Um, and it was on a uh, hydraulic uh, device that was, it was able to turn and move. So we had to figure out how to make the camera move and the, the set piece, the hydraulic um, boat move in a way that was gonna be believable to the rest of the, what we had to do to make the ship be in the water and and all this crazy stuff that you got to figure out um so you know that little sequence it took a lot of time to to get the cameras right and get the get the angles right so that but what really made that work was that we had done so much previs um prior to the shoot so we were able to get the camera right where it needed to be we were able to get tom hanks right where he needed to be as as the torpedo was you know the cg torpedo that wasn't there at that point was barreling by so i think that one in particular um was was really fun like kind of like a puzzle piece to figure out we can see it again yeah, this, there you go. this is it right there it's a pretty it's, yeah. i don't i don't know if it was the climax of the film but it's definitely climactic if yeah, nothing else yeah, it's uh, sure. it's, it's a really intense scene and I, and I do specifically remember the you know the ship tilting mm -hmm. um, at that moment so yeah. that's really interesting of you know what exactly you were doing and you were working with the camera as well um, you know as I mentioned this isn't a monster or superhero movie and I know that you mentioned that those are are more of your favorite films did you like working on a more realistic film um, as opposed to the monsters and aliens yeah, you know, I think every every project has its own challenges and it kind of like is a fresh new thing to kind of solve. So um, uh, this was another one of those things is uh, it, it, knowing what the movie was going to be, knowing Tom Hanks is going to be in it, um, like that's all exciting. And knowing that it was going to look the way it did because Aaron Schneider, again, the director had such a clear vision for um, what he wanted it to look like from the, from the onset. So, um, you know, I just knew it was going to be like this very cool epic kind of ship battle thing. And, you know, knowing that 
it just was, you know, it's exciting no matter what, you know, and um, so yeah, being a part of that and and uh, the the stuff that um, the aliens and all that stuff, the kind of like imagine imaginative things that aren't really there is fun but the realism stuff the stuff that you shouldn't even know is there is also really fun because it's it's like if you can kind of uh trick the viewer into believing what's happening on sc on screen is what's happening then you know that's a uh, job well done and um and knowing that you know that stuff really did look great a lot of scenes it's so hard to do water and that sort of thing and the guys that did the finishing on the project were amazing so it was really cool to see that all done yeah and it's it's a really cool film so i encourage people to to check it out yeah. um so you know i mentioned uh, a few years ago you started your own studio track vfx can you tell us a little bit about how, how you founded it and what you've been working on there sure yeah so um one of my good friends, Jared Avalos, and I, uh, both working at Hydraulics um, a couple years ago, um, we had kind of talked he here and there about doing our own thing. Um, Jared is one of the most brilliant camera tracking guys uh, that I've ever met. And um, uh, us working together at Hydraulics, like I, since I was the VFX supervisor, he was one of my kind of lieutenant supervisors. and. Um, so yeah, we, we kind of thought a lot about, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a, uh, uh, a gap in the way some visual effects are being done, um, in the last few years. And, uh, we ha came up with this idea. What if we had a tracking company that, that just does camera tracking and match moving, um, to start out with? and uh, was made that available to other VFX houses. Um, a lot of VFX houses are, are outsourcing work, um, whether it be camera tracking or rotoscoping, in some cases compositing, um, and a lot of that stuff goes overseas here and there. But uh, we felt like there was an opportunity for us to do something really, something that we do really well and make it more accessible um, having studios in Los Angeles and Vancouver um, and be competitive uh, with these other companies that have been doing this for a while already. So yeah, we started um, just almost two years ago now and um, it's been great. Uh, we grew very quickly. We had to, we started out in an office. It was just five people and um, we quickly outgrew that office and knocked out a wall to make the room bigger, double the size. And then shortly after that, we were like, we have to move again. And we moved into a, a bigger studio that could house about like up to 30 people now. So, um, you know, with, you know, obviously the COVID stuff that's been happening the last few months, um, we were lucky to have a lot of work in the queue already. So um, we were busy for several months, uh, into after you know things started shutting down um and then we saw a little bit of decline like in june um started getting slow and and we just focused on like training and getting you know if we didn't have real work to work on we were making projects for for artists and kind of really focusing on learning and getting better so now um as of now like three weeks ago it's been going bananas uh we're super busy and it seems like things are kind of like people are shooting now again and we're getting back into it. So it's been good. So it's been a really good experience. And um, I've always kind of had a, like a entrepreneurially kind of savviness. I've had other businesses um, besides doing the visual effects. I've owned some real estate here and there and I owned a gym for a while. And I kind of have always had this like other side businesses going on. Um, so uh, to have this visual effects kind of house and doing this kind of work and seeing where it can lead now, like we're starting to do more previs. Like we've been kind of doing it here and there, but um, that's starting to come up more and there's just a lot of different branches we can go from here. So it's exciting being a part of that and growing the business 
and um, having something to continue to, to grow. Um, and I know I'm thrilled that you're working during the pandemic and I know mm -hmm. that you've been bouncing around right now. You're in New Jersey, but yeah. you were at, you were at the Vancouver offices right before that. Are people working in the offices at your studio? Are they working from home? Can you tell us about any specific projects yeah. that they're working on if it's not yeah, confidential? Sure. Um, so when it was March, you know, that that third week of March when things were kind of shutting down and we started our studio based um, in uh, AWS cloud. So we were already working uh, kind of up in the up in the cloud virtual uh, machines. So we made a decision for everybody to, to start working from home um, that week. And it was really seamless. Um, it, other than getting used to, you know, the first couple of weeks was like the using Slack to communicate and a lot of Google Meets stuff and screen sharing and that sort of thing. Um, but we kind of were set up already to have people work from home, which was, was you know, not that it, you know, we it turned out to be a genius thing um, when who knew that this was going to happen. But at the time, we were just thinking, you know, we don't know how quickly we're going to grow. So what if we had a system where we can just turn on a machine when we needed it? Um, we're paying for storage and all that stuff as we need. And there was a very, you know, very little over uh, cost up front for getting a studio started, you know, other than buying desks and monitors and that sort of thing. So um, in that regard, it was really fortunate how we were ready for it. And as the months progressed, we got better at doing meetings. And, um, you know, so every day I have a meeting at 11 o'clock with, with the entire team. Um, no matter where I am in the world, I was in New York yesterday. The day before that, I was in Vancouver. I'm in New Jersey right now. But I had my meeting at 11 a.m., uh, you know, it's two o'clock here today, but, um, <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, we've, we've managed to figure out how to make it work and work really efficiency. And, and, you know, my, my partner and I have talked about how in some ways having to be thrown into this, um, new way of communication has helped our communication overall for that we didn't know that we needed, you know, I think, um, I think people learned uh, a way to keep everybody informed in a way that wasn't happening before. Um, so I think when we do end up going back to the studio, um, it's, we're going to just be stronger for it, for, for what we learned during this time. So, you know, it's been, it was difficult for sure, like up front and, um, I feel like I'm on the phone or on a Zoom call like pretty much all day, every day. But um, the good thing is, is uh, it's it's been working. And I feel like this whole thing is, it's gonna be great to be able to go back to a studio and be with the artists. And, you know, uh, for me personally, I really love being able to talk to somebody face to face and be in front of their monitor. And, you know, you can go over things, uh, um, but, you know, this is the next best thing. And I think that um, going forward, it's kind of changed the paradigm for, for how visual effects is, is being done. And a lot of studios that had never considered having people work remotely are now forced into it and figured out how to do it. And I think now going forward that maybe they're thinking, Hey, this isn't so bad. We can make this work. And um, and like I have a friend that lives in Vancouver, and is working for a company in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't have been able to do that before, um, and it's such a cool opportunity for that person, and at such a cool place to work in New Zealand that probably everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that they wouldn't have been able to do because of their family and, and their life in Vancouver. Um, so, you know, I, I think 
I think it's changed. There's been, it's been challenging for sure, but I think there's going to be some good changes that come about because of it. Um, and we're excited. I, I think like for me, I know when we do start having people come back to the office, it'll be like maybe some people come in Monday, Tuesday, and the rest of everybody comes in Wednesday, Thursday, and then everybody works from home on Friday. Um, it really makes, there's so much more options and so many more options for talent. You know, I can now be okay with hiring somebody that, that lives in New York or Ontario or Florida. Um, if they're really good, then the challenge of getting them to wherever we are you know, isn't a problem anymore. They don't have to be uprooted from where they're living um, and they can come and work and, and work on cool stuff. So, um, well, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, as you're hiring new talent, um, you know, and I'm glad you frame yourself as an entrepreneur, you know, you're a person of color. Uh, as, a, as now a leader of your own studio, are you striving to ensure diversity and inclusivity amongst your staff and those you hire? Yeah, for sure. I'm, uh, Jared, my partner, is um, half Mexican. I'm Dominican and, and uh, Puerto Rican. So, um, you know, coming from that place where, you know, we're Lat Latinos and uh, in a place where, you know, the, there wasn't a lot of diversity in the beginning. Um, in both regards, I think, you know, over the years it's been, I remember it was like very few people that looked like me doing this stuff um, and very few women for sure. So over the years, it's, um, it's been so nice to see that change. And I think there definitely could be so much more diversity. Um, I think it, there's been a lot of really great steps in uh, having women um, get into visual effects. It, it was very much like back when I started, it just seemed like boys club. Um, so uh, that's changed dramatically. And I think some of the best artists uh, that I know are women that are doing this stuff, which is really awesome. So um, yeah, Jared and I have made it a point when especially with um, things that have been going on in, in the States and, and um, the movement that's and the protest. And, you know, we, we took our team aside um, and just talked about everything that was going on um, and talked about diversity and, and what's, and how, like, what are people thinking? How are they feeling about this stuff? And um, we are kind of blessed in the, where we are, we have a very diverse crew already. Um, you know, uh, like I said, Jared and I are, are brown. We got, <laughs> um, we have uh, a couple Koreans on the team. Um, we have a guy from Mexico. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a, there's a good amount of diversity and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to continue um, you know, growing the team and growing the diversity. And I think there's so much to gain from having different people uh, learning from one another in that way. And um, it just is the inclusivity of it, I think, um, should continue. And, uh, you know, I see it, I see it that way. And we're, we're getting now a lot of um, resumes and that sort of thing. People have been reaching out for work. So it's nice to see and, and see people from all over the world uh, inquiring about, about getting jobs and stuff. So that's cool. And um, so any advice to offer students or folks who are looking to break into this field? Yeah, you know, um, I, think, I think one of the biggest things for me when I, when I was uh, getting started was um, I had a very real hustle going. Like I was, I was so focused on um, and concentrated on getting what I wanted to get done and, and doing what I really like to do. So I, I knew I wanted to do animation. I was like, I'm gonna do this however I can. And the other big thing for me at that point was I found a buddy to, to like help 
drive. You know, we were kind of like feeding off each other. And um, so Jeremy Butler, who I mentioned before, um, he and I were like kind of attached at the hip. Like we, we, if people mentioned either of us, it was like as a, as a team, uh, if you don't say Jeremy without Joel and, and vice versa. So, um, and Jeremy uh, did the Avengers uh, panel yeah. with us back in 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, having that support and having somebody that was so um, like minded and that we were kind of very focused on, you know, gaining momentum and doing something um, in this industry was huge for us. So, that was a huge thing. Um, one of the things I wish I, I kind of knew more about. In the beginning was kind of the business of art and visual effects and that sort of thing like kind of um you know setting up a company the proper way and getting uh you know making sure that like just the normal stuff that you wouldn't think about as a as an artist um that you would get that set up and get it moving and and you know i was telling john at one point john mcintosh i was like there should be like a like a business course i think that people should kind of get into at, at school that would help them kind of know what's coming and like even taxes you know like that was something that you know nobody ever really um i hadn't learned on my own and uh to a point and then i started like oh this is something i should i should figure out. I have a business as a freelance artist. This is something I have to figure out. So I think getting that knowledge and getting, um, just getting organized in a way uh, as a, as thinking, your, thinking of yourself as a freelance artist, as a business and knowing that, you know, there's, there's a professionalism that, that I think people really appreciate having a resume and, um, making sure that you know it's not it's it's done professionally and that you're conducting yourself in a way that um you know makes you a good hire i think that was something that uh that i really focused on when i was coming out of school and then now as somebody that is doing the hiring um i kind of have a very keen eye for things or, or like things that i'm really looking for and i can see um which helps me kind of determine like who's going to be a good hire. Um, and so I'd say that's a good thing to focus on and, and get that stuff all straight. So uh, what's the next project of yours that we should keep an eye out for? Are you able to tell us what's coming out next? Um, so we're, we're working on a, on like a bunch of different things right now. Uh, we're working on, a lot of commercials. I think now that things are shooting, it's starting out with um, a bunch of commercials. So we've done a bunch of Lexus commercials, especially. I think Lexus is like really jumping out of the gate. Um, we are going to be doing some stuff for um, a Warner Brothers TV show called The Flash. Um, so that'll be cool. Um, we just finished a show, a Netflix show called Ted Lasso. Um, so that was, that was, kept us real busy, uh, the last few months during, during the early times of COVID and, um, uh, what else? Yeah, there's a lot. It's exciting. There, there's so many different things happening right now. And, um, there's a lot, it's, it's great because there's so many different outlets. I mean, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, HBO, and then all the films that are going to hopefully start shooting again soon so um it's a really it's a really good time i think to to be in this industry there was like a little bit of a lull that happened um back about you know eight years ago that things kind of slowed down and things were changing shifting but the paradigm i think of of entertainment has shifted and there's just way more opportunity to to work on stuff and cool stuff i mean all these studios are, are have hits uh hit tv shows and you know hopefully as people are finishing up school and you know getting into into their careers they'll have an opportunity to, to work on some of this cool stuff 
Well, I'm so thrilled uh, that your success has grown even further than it did the last time we were together for After School Special. Um, I'm so excited to hear about your studio. Again, it's Track VFX, if anyone's interested in, in applying for, for sure. a job there. Yeah. And um, <laughs> thank you for being here again. It was great catching up and uh, great to see your work on screen as always. So everyone check out Greyhound on Apple TV Plus. And, uh, and if you wanna find all of Joel's credits, it's, it's on his IMDB page. It's a very long list of a yeah. lot of cool projects. So thank you so much for being here, Joel, and awesome. uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Have a good night. All right, thanks, Adam. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this Q&A and hope you'll check out our other After School Special videos on the School of Visual Arts' YouTube channel. Thank you for your interest in and support of SVA and its alumni, and for your support of the arts in general. Stay safe, stay healthy, and be well.